Good afternoon, and welcome to Something Sucks series, episode three. Today we'll be talking about the American education system, public education as it were, not private schools or homeschooling or charter schooling and all the other stuff that makes somewhat of sense, um, the things that get better results. We're going to be talking about all the things that most of us went through. I am a public school uh, educated child, uh, a product of that environment, and there are some good things and there are some bad things. We're going to talk about some of the problems that we have or that I have with the system today. And I want to start with the fact that we are living in those in America without dispute, really, the greatest country in the universe that's ever existed. And I say that for several reasons. Um, one, our constitution, the things that it allows, the freedom of speech and expression and religion that um, I don't care what anybody else tells you, no, one, no other country on earth, the other 196 countries do not experience. They may have some levels of freedom, but it gets to a point where you will eventually be admonished um, for your outspokenness. Uh, we don't have that. Um, the system of government that we have um, established in this country is brilliant. The Constitution is brilliant. Uh, the living document that it is, um, you know, this so many years later, it's just great, you know. Um, will we remain the greatest superpower the earth has ever seen? Who knows? It's really not important. I'm just talking about the here and now and where we've come. Have we made mistakes? Sure, but that's because humans are involved. But I say that to say this, this is the greatest country that has ever existed, um, even though it may not be the best place for some people to live. Um, I hear great things about Iceland. Um, I'm sure there are things that would be detractions about Iceland, but um, I hear it's a nice place to live. Um, you know, whereas America, it has its uh, stumbling blocks these days, especially. Um, but nevertheless, I mention it because we, as the greatest country on earth, should set the example for the greatest educational system on earth. And why is that? Because we're trying to, you know, bring up additional people in this world, um, new generations um, that, you know, carry on the tradition of being well-educated, um, thoughtful uh, people that can reason and use logic and um, their intelligence to, you know, build and, you know, create prospering situations for themselves and others. You know, there's no other reason for it. And I got to tell you, the educational system that we currently have is by and large majorly failing. You know, um, I came from a family that really pushed college on me. Um, <laughs> I had an idea. Uh, I remember telling my mom that I wanted to just uh, um, divest all of my college savings and just go fly out to California and try to be a rock star. Because when I was, you know, 17, 18, that's, that's what I felt like I would, because I, that was back when it's all I did was play guitar and, you know, um, you know, th that was my life, you know, and, and I, I probably would have been okay at it, at least from a perspective of wanting it, you know, being passionate about it. I, I'd have been fine, you know, may not have made it, doesn't matter, but I, I'd have loved doing it. But, um, and, and I was a much better guitarist back then because I actually practiced all the time. But um, nevertheless, they, they, you know, squashed that idea very quickly and, and said, no, um, you cannot go to California and try to be a rock star. Um, but you can go to college because that's where you're going. And me and my sister both went to college. Um, you know, there, there were a lot of things um, about that that I liked and a lot of things about it that I didn't like. You know, I, I, I abhor college professors for the most part. Um, I think they live in a fantasy world um, wherein their theories and their ideas about the world um, don't really exist and they don't take root and they don't have anything to do with, uh, um, you know, the real world. I, I take back, you know, I keep going back to back to school for some reason, but Rodney Dangerfield, when he starts talking about that economics professor about, you know, all the kickbacks and all the things that go along with all this stuff, you know, right or wrong, he's right. You know, there, there is a valid point to that. And when you have an institutional world uh, that you live in uh, that has no real bearing on what really happens in the real world, it's kind of annoying. But we're not here to talk about college. We're here to talk about the stupidness of government schools, schools that you have to go to, um, 
And uh, the first thing I'd really like to talk about is the fact that we don't have year-round school. I think this is a big problem. I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I don't like about the school system, and then I'm gonna give some suggestions of the things, not all, but some of the things that I think would, would help make the system better. Uh, the first is year-round school. Uh, we are no longer an agrarian society. We don't have to base anything about the harvest. You know, um, there are people that still, you know, um, the, the Midwest, the flyover states, all that, that still do a lot of harvesting. But uh, by and large, I think keeping kids in school, if there is no good reason for them to be out of school, um, i.e. the harvest, um, you know, working on a farm, helping out your family, that kind of stuff, um, if there's no reason for that, then there's no real good reason for them to sit around and play the PlayStation all summer. Uh, I think that, you know, crime spikes, you know, um, all your civil disobedience, all of your um, issues with juveniles, all of the things pick up because they don't have anything to do. You know, most kids aren't going out and getting jobs. They're just lounging around the neighborhood, just getting into trouble. I mean, that's all there's to it. Plus, it kind of negates all the stuff they've learned if you get done in, you know, late May and then you come back in late August and you got this two or three month layoff whereby everything that you learned last year or last semester, as they call it now, um, you know, is supposed to build upon what you know, you know, uh, the, the coming year. And it doesn't because you've forgotten most of it because you took three months off to, to you know, hang out around your neighborhood and go to the beach a couple times and this and that. Um, you know, I, I just think that you're around school and let's shove this stuff down their throat. I feel that, and I, I wouldn't have necessarily agreed with this when I was in school, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 years removed almost from it. So I, I can think clearly now. Um, I, I have a different perspective. I think that school should be um, the ultimate preparation for adulthood. I think that, um, and, and you're going to see that theme with the things I talk about. Um, you know, everything that, if school is not made to make you a good patriot and a good citizen and a good neighbor and a productive member of society, um, then what is it for? Well, what really is it for? Well, it's just so you're not a, a bumbling twit uh, as you go through life in and out of prison and trouble and dead end jobs and menial tasks that you're just trying to do to make ends meet. I, I don't understand what the point of it would be. So I think the first step would be putting kids in school as much as possible. Give them a break, you know, give them a spring break, give them a fall break, that kind of thing like colleges. Give them a, a couple weeks, two, three weeks at Christmas. That's cool. But uh, June, July, August, rock and roll, man. We're still in school. We're still learning. That we're still here to, to, to get a job done. The next thing I'll talk about is teacher pay. Um, teacher, I know a ton of teachers. Um, I know a ton of people um, that... Uh, I either am friends with or I've worked with over the years whose wives are teachers, um, uh, typically speaking, uh, more so than, than, I don't know a lot of guy teachers, but I, I know a lot of uh, females who are teachers and um, they don't get paid enough, sure. Uh, I will totally agree with that. Although there is the thing to be said about the fact that you only work like nine or 10 months out of the year. So there there is a, a certain percentage of it that you're not getting because you're absent. I, I imagine we don't really, like if you're, if you're making 45,000 a year, you know, maybe you'd be making 52 if you work those extra two months. But since we don't have year round school, whatever, but I propose year round school. So let's up the pay. But I say up the pay anyway. Um, you know, if children, and I hate quoting Whitney Houston, but if children are our greatest commodity and I believe they are, I don't understand how they couldn't be. Um, I would shoot a puppy before a child. You know, there, there is a hierarchy there of, of cuteness. Um, and, but if children are our greatest commodity in this world and in this country that we've created, then why do we not invest more? And if all it is is giving every teacher a twelve to $15,000 raise, then give them a twelve dollars to $15,000 raise. I guarantee you we can come up with those savings somewhere. Um, not the least of which is abolishing the Department of Education, which is about $68 billion. Uh, we'll start there. How about that? Um, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But pay them more, okay? Uh, you know, the, the people that we, yeah, there's not a, a ton of rewards for some of the stuff that we want to pay, you know, the garbage men. They, don't, they probably don't get paid a ton of money. But get rid of the garbage men, and we have a large problem in our society very quickly, you know? There are things, but the garbage doesn't bring in money necessarily, um, you know, at least not down here in the South. 
Um, there is a lot of money in refuse in other places, but the point is, it's not like it's something that brings in a profit, okay? Um, the bottom line is, is kind of dull, okay? So you want to pay them as little as possible, but they're an essential service, pay them what they're worth. And teachers are the same thing, pay them what they're worth. And if you want to pour out the greatest good that you can into these wax molds of children that we're trying to produce an assembly line of so that they can continue this great country that was established so many hundreds of years ago, then why not pay the people that are entrusted with their education a little bit more? And by God, weed out the ones that suck because there are some crappy teachers out there. Um, find a way to hold them to a standard, hold them to a standard, get rid of the concept of tenure and, and all that kind of stuff out of the mix and these unfireable, untouchable people and get them out to the bread line, you know, bye, you're gone, take it off, you know, whatever. So I, I would year round school and I would pay the people that are there year round, you know, um, a little bit more, uh, a, a lot bit more actually. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the topics that we choose to teach. Um, you know, I, I, I have an, a remarkable memory. Um, I was blessed with that. Um, it has served me well, but it is also a plague. Um, it is an absolute plague. Some of the stuff that I remember and retain, uh, without even trying. Um, but it, it also has served me well because my way of studying for tests was basically just paying mild attention to someone giving a lecture and I could just remember most of the minutia that I needed for the test and then it's out the door. I, you know, you retain what you retain. To me, true knowledge is what you seek out on your own. And I love knowledge. I, I, um, I, I, I'm a voracious reader. I love data and facts and stuff. I mean, I, I, I can't watch a movie without Wikipedia on because I've got to learn all this stuff about it. And, and I don't know where that came from, but I've always been a very inquisitive child. Um, and, uh, I say child, I'm 46 years old, but you know, you, 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 you are what you are. Um, and I've, I've just always, I, I like to deconstruct things. I like to know how they work. I like to sit back and, and ask questions once I figure out what the system is and then pick apart what I think is dumb and, and kind of make it more efficient and whatnot. And, and I, I think that, that learning it, it came from somewhere and I don't know where, um, you know, I'm sure part of it was the, the way I was nurtured as a kid and brought up, you know, to, to kind of not question authority, but, but don't just accept things that are given to you, you know, become your own person and, and go from there. But I say all that to say um, certain topics in school I really appreciated and I, I completely endorse literature, for example. I think there's a lot to learn from, you know, writing, reading, you know, and, and I'm not even talking about like the text generation and how they can't really talk because that's all they know is this shorthand, you know, text speak and whatnot. I'm talking about subject verb agreement, grammatical errors, syntax errors, people, the fact that people can't really form, you know, cogent sentences and whatnot uh, and, and put together some form of thought with, with any kind of regularity. And I think the problem with that is they're not, they're not well read. You know, I think that to be a good writer, you got to read and you got to write and you got to practice all that stuff. You know, so to me, you know, bringing in Shakespeare and, you know, J.D. Salinger and Lord of the Flies and the Great Gatsby and the Scarlet Letter and the, um, the Odyssey and, you know, Franz Kafka. I, I love that. Um, Aunt Shakespeare, by the way, uh, The Tempest, I think was my favorite play for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, all, all these different things. Animal Farm, I remember thinking that was so weird, but I went back and read it later and it made a lot of sense. You know, Lord of the Fly, all this stuff. You know, um, it, it's, it, you know, if you don't have that stuff, you, you lose out a lot on, A, falling, hopefully falling in love with the beauty of the written word because, the stuff I just listed is, you know, even Beowulf. I mean, there's just some really cool stuff in there. Plus the word Grendel is kind of neat. Um, but, you know, you've got you've to gotta get people, and I say people, kids, to fall in love with what they're learning. And some people it's not going to take, others it is. But, you know, um, you, you've got to find a way to appeal to people that you're teaching so that they can, you know, kind of draw in close to you and, and, you know, buy into your system and accept what it is you're teaching. Although I will say that, I had to read Jane Eyre and oh god, those Bronte sisters. Well, no use. But there are things that you know I, I didn't care for. Um, and, and I will say this: um, 
well, I'll hold that later. Uh, but, but you know, so literature, I think, is great. Uh, reading, writing, you've got to be able to have some some semblance of an idea of what you're putting, you know, pen to paper on. And, and be able to talk about, you know, how Herman Melville is boring as crap and Ernest Hemingway is pretty cool. You know, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a difference. Um, John Steinbeck, you know, why, why did he write what he wrote, you know? Um, uh, you, you know, there's just so much great stuff out there. And don't get me started on Poe and, you know, the jungle and, and all this stuff. That's just, it's just great that we have all these classics, you know, to kill a mockingbird and all this stuff. Um, so literature um, and, and reading and writing, language arts, all that stuff is, is great. Math, however, is a little bit different, okay? I don't see any point in there being trigonometry and calculus and all this stuff. I think there need to be paths and, and kind of like college. You know, um, high schools have started mirroring college a little bit more, but I think there needs to be paths that you can choose that, hey, I would like to, you know, focus on this. And then, oh, okay, well then chemistry and trig or chemistry and calc will be your path. And this dude over here just needs basic math. I, I see no point in algebra, anything algebra and above. I think geometry, the basics of math, percentages, fractions, probability. I still use probability. I remember all that stuff from school because I use it all the time. But the algebra, you know, because aside from basic like Pythagorean theorem and stuff like that, you're not going to remember any of that crap unless the field that you decide to go into regularly uses it. And if so, my God, go to algebra seven, you know, take it to the end of the world. That's fine. All right. But calc and trig and all this stuff, you know, um, it, it's just not necessary, you know, even as electives to, to, to have to go. I think that the basics are what we need because people obviously need that stuff. Uh, when we fast forward 15 years out of high school and they're like, man, I ain't used any of this calculus yet. There's a point to why everybody says that because it's, it's, it is dumb. Okay. Um, Physics. I love physics. I learned a lot about physics and I had a fairly hot teacher. The only teacher that was ever mildly attractive. Um, shout out to my 11th grade, uh, uh, physics teacher. But, um, you know, I, I found a lot of, um, you know, usefulness out of that. I wouldn't take anything away from that. Chemistry, however, um, I remember those are the two paths. You had to do physics or chemistry. I took physics. It made more sense to me. And I, I, I still use fulcrums and wedges and stuff like that when I'm working on projects and all. It, it still, you know, rings true and makes sense to me. Chemistry, however, should be one of those paths that, hey, I don't need to know about your graduated pipettes and your Bunsen burners and your, your, your what, it, Erlenmeyer and your Florence flasks and all this crap and you know, it's not necessary to me. Okay. It's just a good way to blow up a high school classroom, quite frankly, is to give these kids all this weird stuff. But if that's your focus, if that's, you know, you want to go into molecular biology, then by all means take chemistry and, and do it up, go to chemistry seven. Uh, we, we, we endorse that, you know, to me, chemistry is this, I worked in a restaurant in high school and, uh, I was cleaning dishes. It was a really, really nice restaurant. It was the nicest restaurant in town. Um, you know, at the time, $30, $35 a plate kind of thing. And I'm in there cleaning and whatnot. And, uh, I made the mistake of mixing bleach with oven cleaner in a, in an attempt, an honest attempt to, Hey, let's clean this stuff a little bit faster. Um, and what I concocted was the most neon green, uh, pot of, uh, fluid I have ever seen in my life. And I think I created some kind of sulfuric acid or something, but we cleared out, I say we, I cleared out that um, um, whole entire restaurant, the kitchen staff, everybody. I'm out in the parking lot dry heaving because I looked over and breathed in a bunch of that crap. I don't know what it, I'm sure somebody on here with a chemistry uh, uh, knowledge, what oven cleaner and bleach turns into. Um, it's noxious, I know that much. And um, it took a lot of um, time to air that place out. And let's just say the dinner rush left. Uh, but that's really all I need to know about chemistry is you don't mix anything with bleach. Now I know. I didn't know that at the time when I was 17, 18 years old. Uh, biology, I think genetics, anatomy, uh, ecology is awesome. Uh, but we're getting a little crazy when we start talking about mitochondria and DNA and, you know, the Golgi apparatus and all this crazy stuff. Again, take a path. And if that's the path you want, then focus on it. By all means, go to biology seven. Okay. History. Here's something that we don't teach enough of, okay? Um, world history, American history, state history, from whatever state you're from, you know, you need to have a better working knowledge of what's going on in this world. It, it's embarrassing how stupid we are. 
um, as as a populace. You know, I remember when Jay Leno, I think it was Jay Leno, he used to go out on his show and walk around, you know, L.A. or, or wherever in, in Hollywood and 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 ask people, you know, hey, uh, you know, I can't even remember what what he would ask, but the, you know, who who's the vice president? You know, how many states do we have? Um, you know, how many people are in Congress? Um, how many people are on the Supreme Court? Just basic uh, like civics type stuff, and you know that kind of thing. It, it, if you know, there was a time I can't quite do it anymore, but I could list all the presidents in order. I know a lot about presidential history because it fascinates me. Um, I I can I I can without pause name all the uh, the capitals of the states and put them on a map, even without drawing lines. I can put everything where it goes. I mean, stuff like that to me is just 101, I'm an American. You know, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't be able to do that. And yet we can't even, you know, now that Bader Ginsburg's dead, nobody can, most people can't even tell you one person that's on the Supreme Court um, or, or much less or who's getting, you know, confirmed as we speak. You know, that, that's an embarrassment to, to your country, if you ask me, because those are just basic 101 things that you need to have. And the school system does nothing to help that kind of stuff. Um, to me, I, I made a list of some of the stuff that, that, that you need, right? How to read labels and stores and, you know, price guiding and indexing, how to write checks, working bank accounts is doing your taxes, basic vehicle maintenance, cooking, finances, um, first aid, communication with other human beings. We suck at this. We don't teach. And a lot of it lies on parents, but we don't, you know, teach how to be in a relationship and how to be, you know, uh, communal with one another and communicate and, and, and not just be complete dicks to each other. You know, I mean, we're trying to run a society here. Last I checked cybersecurity, how to, how to address failures, you know, because you're going to have them. What do you do? How do you pick yourself up by the bootstraps and keep rolling and, and not be just a complete mess of crap on the floor? You know, how to, how to complete, you know, the successful things that you've always strived to be, you know, uh, how to do something different volunteering you know i don't think there's enough focus on stuff like that and schools can can impress upon people the importance of volunteering and becoming a part of your community because you get a lot more out of it um interviews job interviews all these practical things that none of which i learned in school would do there's a couple cooking things I, I took a home ec class one time as an easy uh Nobody messes with the jesus but i just did um i took a home ec class as an easy a one time and i walk in the first day and there's like a a kitchen in there it was weird man like me and like three other dudes are in there and uh we're like learning how to cook cakes and stuff or i guess you bake them but um and, and the last thing i will say is honor um i think there should be leadership honor classes um how to be a respectable human being you know how to be a good citizen how to be a good neighbor how to be something that like the Citadel and VMI and places like that um, will, will institute as part of their curriculum, you know, how to be a, a stand up human being. Um, I, I don't think we do a good jump because education is not about can I pass a test? And I don't even believe that should be the metric. I think we should find something else to judge whether or not someone can do something. I think a basic reading and writing and just, you know, are you able to, you know, form a sentence is, is one thing, but, you know, test taking shouldn't necessarily be the metric that we have. I think it should be how rounded off a person are you and, and what do you bring to the table and, you know, get that in a bunch of different ways. Um, but, you know, if, if you can go through life and not even know, um, you know, current events, what's going on, I think that's a problem. You know, have a current event class, for God's sakes. You know, I remember one of my buddies was uh, his son, and I want to say it was for the military, but I could be wrong. But he goes for his job interview and they ask him, you know, tell me um, three things that are current events in the, in the, in the newspaper today, you know, or this week or whatever, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he had to rattle that stuff off. Fortunately, he knew it, but you know, I, that's, that's an interesting question, you know, on a job interview, because there, there's something to be said for that. Because if you don't teach somebody how to continually learn throughout their life and keep learning, you're not going to be any good at it later on. You're not just going to pick it up one day and be like, huh, I'd really like to be a studious person. No, you're just going to be just a mutant going through life, just a, a goofball that, that doesn't really bring anything to the table. Um, and, and those aren't the people that are going to cure cancer and going to come through and, you know, invent new things and, and think outside the box. In fact, blow the box up, just destroy it. Let's stop talking about the box. Let's sell it to another country. How about that? We don't even need the box. You know, the next thing I'll talk about of why schools suck 
is a proponent of the, or, you know, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of the fact that families suck. You know, so many of these kids come from poverty stricken homes and, and don't hear me wrong. I didn't come with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was just middle class, blue collar, you know, run of the mill America. Um, I wasn't poor. I definitely wasn't rich. Um, but my parents, you know, loved me and nurtured me to make me into who I am. I mean, obviously they, they had a huge part in the composite of what I became, you know, <laughs> albeit with some stumbling blocks, but, uh, you know, the, the, the final product worked out okay. Um, but so many of these people through no fault of their own, these kids come to school, um, below the poverty line, you know, either not eating, not, not, not whether, whether it be food or knowledge or love, they're not fed one way or the other, literally or figuratively at home. So what is the only safety net that they have? It's the schools, okay? It's the schools. So why not make those schools the most nurturing, lovable places? I mean, make these schools something to where you don't hate going there, you know, because there were so many days that I hated going to school. Um, and there were days where I liked it, you know, and I'm not saying make every day, you know, um, be a, 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 what do you call it? A field trip and ice cream day. That's not what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, ice cream socials should be every third day. But listen, what I'm saying is make it an enjoyable thing, whether it's once a week we watch a movie or we do group exercises or, you know, there's, there's some kind of tactile exercise. We're not just sitting at a desk listening to somebody teach to us who may or may not give a crap about the product that they're teaching to. Um, I think that you, you really need to um, kind of bring these kids in and, and, and don't get me wrong. I think most teachers um, or at least most of the ones I know um, or all the ones I know, but most of the teachers that I've seen around my place um, in, in North Carolina, uh, they wouldn't do it if they didn't care. Um, they've got a heart that is a couple times bigger than, than normal people's because, you know, you don't, you don't teach without having that calling on your heart. You definitely don't get it in for the, for the money or the notoriety or, you know, all the chicks and, and, you know, gold chains, like none of that stuff's coming from it. You know, you, you get what you get out of it. Um, and there can be good days and bad days, like every job, but families pretty much suck a lot of times. Okay. So you got to keep these kids busy. Uh, year round school helps with that because they're constantly busy as opposed to, you know, taking so much time off, but they need to learn to read. They need to learn that they can fall in love with reading and that there is knowledge out there and quit normalize it to where it's not, um, it's not a bad thing to be the smart kid in a poor neighborhood. You know, it's okay to be a smart kid in a nice neighborhood. Um, but you go to a bad neighborhood and all of a sudden, you know, everybody shuns you because you know, you're, you're, you know, the, misery loves company. They're trying to drag you down and all that. But if you take those ones that are trying to drag you down and, you know, pull a few of those people into the good side, you know, make them readers, make them people that appreciate learning and they want to get there, but nurture people, you know, encourage people. Um, you know, I, I think telling people that they've done a good job, um, goes so far in a child's heart, you know, that, uh, I don't think we do it enough. And, and I'm talking like over overkill sometimes is, is probably what you need because you're combating the, the, the seven to eight hours a day that you have with this child and then they go home for the remainder of the day and the whole weekend and God knows what they're exposed to, you know? Um, you know, and the last thing I'll say about, you know, the family situation, maybe a little bit uh, misconstrued perhaps, but also a little bit controversial. And I, I think it's bullying, you um, I think that bullying is a good character to building thing. You know, um, I, I'm not saying that the act of bullying of somebody picking on you physically and, 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 and all that stuff is a good thing. I'm saying that what the product it creates, uh, what comes out of that, the stronger person that you become, you know, is, is a good thing. I, I think more times than not, you know, um, I remember when I was in like fourth or fifth grade, this kid who was older than me and much larger than me, for no reason, really. I hadn't done anything to him. Came over and took my, I had like two milks and just squeezed them and just dumped them all over my lunch. And uh, if I'd have had a linoleum knife, I'd have cut his face open. I mean, that's how mad I was on the inside. But, you know, what are you going to do when you're, uh, you know, you don't have the wherewithal to stand up for yourself and you're physically not as large or gifted as the person that just uh, ruined your lunch? Um but then fast forward to eighth grade and I had somebody 
that I don't even remember why. I remember his name was Charles or Charlie, one of the two. Um, but kept kept just pushing my buttons, and finally we were in health class, and I just got out of my desk and just nailed him in the mouth. And amazingly, he never picked on me again. <laughs> and I got sent to the principal's office and paddled, which is a completely different animal. They don't think they do that much anymore. But um, <laughs> but uh, um, and then I get in trouble for getting paddled. But it's like I don't care, you know. And and you know, me bringing up boys, my two rules were. Um, nobody has the right to put their hands on you for any reason whatsoever. So don't let them and don't ever start fights, but you, you damn sure better end them. You know, that, that's all there is to it. And, and I, I don't care if you beat somebody unconscious, I'll never, I'll come to your defense every time, but nobody gets the, nobody has the uh, right to put their hands on you. It's just as simple as that. Um, and that goes for anybody in any walk of life whatsoever in any situation. Um, man, woman, child, it does not matter. Okay. But nevertheless, I think that a little bit of bullying creates a stronger person. It just, I think there's different levels that it takes to get to your tipping point where you're finally like, all right, that's enough, you know, and, and then you've drawn your line in the sand. And amazingly, people, um, you know, they stop messing with you because when you're an easy mark, you're an easy mark, you know, and eventually you get to the point where you just don't want to put up with it anymore. And it's funny because from that day, um, <laughs> life just got a little easier because you become this demonstrative version of yourself. And, you know, you, you realize that, Hey, I can stand up for myself, you know, more than I thought I could and whatnot. Um, so, you know, I like that. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is school lunch. Okay. Now this is one of the things that's, uh, broken with the system because of what it creates. And that's morbidly obese children that, you know, have heart blockages and high blood pressure when they're like nine. It's it's ridiculous, okay? First of all, why does lunch cost money, okay? I, I shouldn't have to send money to school with my kids because it's like toll roads. I don't like paying toll roads because I pay my taxes, okay? My taxes should cover that toll. And if it doesn't, then don't build the road, okay? If you can't afford to, to maintain it, then we'll just wait till we have enough in the coffers to do that, okay? But you don't need me coming through every day paying you 47 cents uh, per axle to, to drive up and down my already taxed road, okay? You already, I gave it the office kind of thing, okay? And the same thing with school. I pay my, my taxes, the schools have that. School, it, it costs money, okay? Business costs money sometimes. So if it costs money, then spend it because we're spending it on children who again, as Whitney said, are our future, okay? And if our future isn't worth the children, what else is it worth, okay? What else are we spending money on um, other than perhaps the defense of our country that would be as important as the people who will be the future of it, okay? So let's just eradicate the lunch thing and we eliminate the free lunch kids because now we don't know who's getting free lunch. Everybody's getting free lunch because it's government lunch. And another thing, lunch costs like a $1.25, you know, in 1989, 90 when I was you know, in school, as I recall. And it's like, you know, I, I looked up the inflation and in today's money, that'd be 271. So we're not even paying enough to substantiate the cost for what we're getting anyway, because you can't buy anything for 271. So it, it's, I'm only covering probably a third of the cost anyway. So let's just get rid of that third and just give it away for free. Okay. That's what our taxes should be doing. Beneficial things so that everybody gets, you know, whatever. Um, I remember in high school, there was two cafeteria lines where you could get food, food, you know, just, you know, your, your regular uh, meat and potato type things. And then there was like a, um, uh, basically like a, a, a convenience store line, right? And I remember most days in high school, I would get a two pack of cream filled Krispy Kreme donuts, like a couple like juices, which were just plain sugar uh, and water. And then like um, one of those like, like apple or blueberry or cherry pies. And that would be my lunch, okay? I don't want to know how many calories that is. I had the metabolism of, you know, a monkey, but, uh, so it, it didn't really affect me. But my, my point is I didn't need to be eating all that. That's not really lunch. So to me, eradicate all the sugar stuff like that. That shouldn't even be an option. I remember they put drink machines in, uh, or maybe they were there my whole high school years. I don't remember, but they were down towards the gym and there was nothing greater than uh, a Welch's grape drink after gym class. You know, if you'd run a mile and a half or whatever, uh, that, that was great. But I don't think that makes it right, okay? Quit giving kids, quit quit feeding kids into, you know, this, oh, we've got to have all this sugar and, and carbonation and, 
high fructose corn syrup and all. It's we're creating a country. I mean, you can go to any mall, any you know outdoor pavilion, anywhere, a park. What you're gonna find them in parks mostly, but everybody is just morbidly obese or on their way to it. I mean, a nine year old shouldn't weigh 174 pounds. Okay, that that's absolutely ridiculous, and it's stuff like this that's creating that problem. And schools are propagating this stuff. And now we've got schools that are bringing in Subway, Chick-fil-A, and Arby's and all this crap. You think anybody's going to go through the line and get, you know, a, um, a, a regular, you know, meal? Or are they going to go to Subway and get, you know, a, a foot-long sub? And, all? and it just brings so many, so many vast problems that we're going to pay for so many times over in our healthcare system when we could be taking all that money and just dumping it into free lunches and making them healthy, all right? Why not farm to table stuff? You know, get local grocers and local, um, you know, farmers in line with some of this stuff and let's get that involved. Hell, let's grow the stuff on on campus. Let's have a an FFA or some kind of club or something that, you know, you get fresh fruits and vegetables grown at the school. And another thing, I don't know what the lunch lady schedule is, but, I know some of them get there and make breakfast because some of the kids would have breakfast because they would come to school and not have have eaten the night before, I guess. I don't know why. I never ate school breakfast. But, um, you, you know, you got to figure, let's say they work seven to two. I mean, what? how early could it be? Why does everything have to come from a can? Do they not have enough time with the, the 15 ladies that work back there to to slice some um, some fresh uh, romaine lettuce and some potatoes and, and, and all that kind of stuff? I mean, how long does that really take? I mean, even with 1,200 students or whatnot, if you get enough people, and again, oh, it's going to cost a little bit of money. It's going to be a little bit more labor intensive. Okay, that's fine because we're, we're, it's like Rachel Ray said, we're dumbing down the palates of these children because they're growing up to be nothing but a chicken nugget and French fry and a Coke generation when they should be eating avocados and couscous and you know fresh fish and just stuff that they're probably not going to get exposed to otherwise um we can all go through life and eat a wendy's um thick burger um our, our entire life and it's great it tastes great it's supposed to taste great but that's not the point um this is we're we're, we're teaching kids just like we're teaching them in the classroom we're teaching them how to take care of themselves and taking care of yourself is not eating chick-fil-a sandwiches and welch's great seven times a week you know, um, Monday through Friday and, and washing it down with donuts and candy and stuff. It's kids are going to get enough candy and sugar in their life without that. You know, um, it's just wrong that the government schools that are tasked with this stuff allow this crap to come in. And it's just big corporations. It's all money. Hey, let me, uh, let me get my, uh, thing. Let me create a food court in the high schools and, uh, you know, I'll slide you some votes. And I mean, it's, it's just like everything else. It's all about money and it's really stupid. Um, you know, I, I think that all that stuff needs to be completely reimagined. And another thing, the last thing I'll say about lunches is they need to issue everybody their own lunch tray. Why? Because I used one of those to sled one time and I looked like Clark Griswold setting a new land speed record. Those things are wicked fast, right? Uh, so anyway, going on to one of the last things we'll talk about, and then I'll talk about things that I would uh, change to make things better, and that's PE. Um, you know, no one should have to run a mile around a basketball court. A, because there's no real boundaries, and you're going to cut corners. You're not really running a mile. And secondly, no one can remember 18.7 or whatever mile laps it is around a basketball uh, court to record a mile. So no one's really actually running a mile. So let's go out on a track, run like four, four and a half, whatever it is. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's four laps is a mile. Um, and, and do it that way. But PE is a, PE is a weird thing because PE, it's all, especially in middle school. Um, it was a little different in high school, but growing up, you know, I understand exposing people to all the different stuff, but it was really weird because uh, it, it's almost like how many sports and activities can we, you know, cram into a, a semester or a year, you know, this week or today we're doing uh Tybo and next tomorrow we're doing the bobsleigh. Um, and then we're going to do some lawn darts and we're gonna do bocce. And then next week we're in a fence. You know, it's like, what, what are we doing? What happened to basketball, baseball, badminton, volleyball, you know, the normal stuff that, you know, we should quit focusing on these weird I mean, how, what are you going to expose me to fencing for? I'm going to buy an Epi. Like, where am I getting? I don't even know where you buy an Epi. I guess Amazon. Am I saying it right? Epi? E-P-E-E? -E -E? I think that's what it's called. I only know that because it's a crossword clue and it comes up all the time. But the little foil, the sword 
that you use in fencing if you're left-handed. Um, but yeah, um, and, and another thing is I don't want any fat PE teachers, okay? I remember we had a fat PE teacher in uh, middle school. I uh, can't remember his name. I can see his face, but he wore those, uh, what are those tight, those tight, uh, not tight, but like uh, elastic pants with the, the pockets in the front, not the side pockets, but like, and it's one of the sport jockey, um, I can see them, but, uh, but it's like all PE teachers wore, they wore those pants and then they had the, the necklace with the, the whistle and whatnot. But what I thought was weird was, uh, you know, his desk was in the locker room, okay? And when I say in the locker room, I'm saying his desk was in the corner and all the little baskets that you would pull out to put your uh, your uniform, you know, you'd change into that would get washed once a week when you took it home on Friday, hopefully. Um, and he would just sit there with his feet up on the desk while we all changed. I just thought that was kind of an odd place to A, put your desk, and B, to B, while other people were changing. Maybe it was so that people didn't like cut up and you know, fight and whatnot. Although I do remember this one kid, I think his name was David. I don't remember his last name, but David. David would always change in the bathroom stall instead of in the little horseshoe of where everybody else changed. And you wanted to be like, dude, ain't nobody looking at you. Nobody cares about you. Just get changed so we can go play fencing, you know, and all this crap. And uh, now you're just drawing attention to yourself and it's just weird that you're in there because A, that's just odd. And B, uh, now you got to take your shoes and your socks off while standing in front of a toilet. Now you got piss all over your feet. Like I, I ain't changing clothes in a bathroom stall. Okay, I'd, I'd just soon change it out on the the court. You know, the the fencing court or or whatever. Uh, a lot of fencing went on in the uh, school I went to. Um, but anyway, uh, PE. Let's 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 kind of narrow it down to to get just a little bit more uh, thing going on. So what would I do to end these problems? Well, that's easy, you say. Um, this is an all-encompassing list because I could talk about this for a lot. I just tried to hit upon just a few things. But a couple things I would do is I would eliminate principal bonuses. Uh, where I come from in North Carolina, principals uh, at, at high schools get a large chunk of money based on the graduation rates and the test results and that kind of stuff. And, you know, they already get paid an exorbitant amount of money for, for what they do. Um, I think they're completely different. They're administrators. They're not teachers. I think the teachers need to be more uh, equal to what crazy amounts those principals make. But you know, think about it. think about yourself, okay? Think about your own scruples and your own morals and the way that you lead your life. And if I told you, hey, you know, if you pass 96% of your, um, your, your classes, you know, on to the next grade, uh, there's a $19,500 bonus for you. Well, that's a nice speedboat or a nice camper or a hell of a nice vacation in uh, Burundi or, you know, Turks and Caicos or uh, Benin or Togo or wherever the heck you vacation. Um, uh, it would be difficult, very difficult, I think, for most people to be like, yeah, I can't do that because these people don't deserve to be passed on. They're not ready. They didn't pass they're not eligible for the next grade because of their deficiencies and blah, blah, blah. Most people are going to be like, show me the money and, and you know, they're Jerry Maguire in it all day long. That's a wrong system to have monetary. I, I, I get why that was probably thought to be a good idea in the first place, but that's a stupid system because it, it just invites all kinds of fraud. And I can only imagine in bigger cities and, you know, the bigger you get, the more problems come in. Uh, the next thing is pay for the teacher supplies, Okay. Teachers shouldn't have to make X amount of money and then spend seven hundred dollars every year going and buying construction paper and crepe paper and, and markers and all this crap to decorate the room. Buy that stuff for them. Again, we got to spend some money. Let's spend some money, okay? If we're going to waste money in this country, and we are, uh, we're definitely good at wasting money. As I'm sure other countries are kind of like, good Lord, America, how many trillions do you need to know? Don't ever, don't ever tell the president what comes after a trillion. That's for sure. But uh, if we're going to waste money, then let's waste it on stuff that matters, and that's most of these kids. And I say most of them because some of these kids need to be left behind. There is a contingent of of students, okay? Um, and it's not a lot. It's, you know, maybe 1% or 2%, but they need to be left behind. They are uh, disruptive. They are not ever going to become what you want them to become. They're just going to have to learn through life later in life where they wake up one day in their mid-30s and they're like, 
dang, I made some stupid mistakes and now I've got to atone for them, okay? It's just gonna take life experience for that to come along. You're not gonna be able to instill it because they're, they know everything, you can't teach them anything, and they're a disruption for everything else. So expel them, bye, you, we tried, you're gone. You can go be an adult, go get yourself emancipated, go do whatever you gotta do, go live under a bridge, you don't really care, but you're not gonna disrupt and bring down other people who are trying to be productive members of society, um, you know, with your antics. Uh, so leave them, uh, hold them back if they don't deserve to go to the next grade for whatever reason, and expel them if they've clearly shown that they don't belong in the educational system because of you know their their antics again. Um, bad teachers, we've got to find a way to get the bad teachers out of the schools. Okay, and and I think much like. You know, I, I would, I would put, I think travel, I mean, my, my parents taught me that, that travel is one of the best educators and it is, you know, just, I mean, going to two states away will teach you more about life than, than you could sitting in a couple hours in a classroom. I mean, it's just interesting seeing all the things you're not exposed to. And so many people, um, so many kids that, you know, come from low income households, they don't ever go anywhere. They don't ever leave their hometown. They might go up for, you know, a week or so to some, you know, uh, Jersey or New York or somewhere up north for, for a week, go stay with an aunt or an uncle or something if they happen to have that. But but outside of stuff like that, they're not going on vacations where they cruise the country and they, they'll never know what the other side of the country looks like or, or you know, the, the southern tip of Florida or middle middle Texas and all this stuff. So why not, you know, give them a couple weeks and let's let these kids travel. Much like we send them abroad, it's probably not as safe an option for a high school kid, but why not swap them to different districts and whatnot and just have sponsor homes and stuff like that and, and just see a different world, you know? Um, send them to a rich neighborhood in your capital city to get them out of this um, low-income area in this uh, rural area they live in and, and expose them to stuff. And likewise, take the teachers and rotate them. You know, that might not be a popular thing because, oh, I teach in this school and it's a good neighborhood and it feeds in from good neighborhoods and all that stuff. Um, and it's, it's real close to the house and my commute is easy and all that stuff. Well, you're a good teacher. So we kind of need you in the crappy schools too, because there shouldn't be crappy schools. If we're going to have government schools, they should all be on par with one another. We can have crappy students at time, but we shouldn't have crappy schools. If we're going to put a product out, it should be a product that, that, that rock and rolls. Okay. So if you've got to take some of those really awesome ringer teachers and put them in an inner city for a year and, and let them do a rotation kind of thing um, and, 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 you know, experience things that they're not going to otherwise experience, but also let those kids experience a really good teacher. Then if that makes the end product better, then by all means do it. And, and make, a, make an incentive. If, if you've got a home school that you, you know, kind of base out of and then you get sent for a year to another one, then give them a 5% raise or, or, you know, make it worth their while. You know, it's Money you know, incentivizes a lot of things, you know, and and, when, and again, when we're talking about the future of this country, there's not enough money that we can't throw at this problem that doesn't solve it. As long as the problem solutions that we're using are sound and they've been thought out, okay? Um, special ed, I think there should be major incentives, and maybe there are, I don't know enough about it, but um, those teachers have great hearts, uh, more so than normal people. But teachers that do special education for those with disabilities and, and stuff like that, their hearts are like the Grinch. They've grown however many times bigger that day. Um, those, those, the, the, the patience and the, the heart um, and the instinctual love that it takes for a person to do that, because that ain't me. Okay, I'm glad there's people like that out there, but I, I couldn't do that for any amount of money. I just don't have the patience for it. It would frustrate me to no end. Um, you know, even if I it just, you know, even if I wanted to do a good job, it would just frustrate me because there's just limitations to some of the people that you would be dealing with as to what they can get accomplished. But uh, incentivize that stuff, you know, because the world, you know, obviously needs those kind of teachers on board. Next thing is trades. You know, I'm, I'm just basically repeating what Mike Rowe has been saying for years, but electrical, HVAC, welding, plumbing, carpentry, mechanic work, flooring, nursing, uh, masonry, graphic design, computer programming, video editing, huge market in these days, photography, all this stuff, male, female, uh, it doesn't matter. Get these trades out there. Okay. Not everybody needs to go to school. In fact, most people don't need to go to college. Uh, college is really a waste of money these days, especially. Um, and it's not going to teach you what you need to learn 
for most things that you end up doing. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to, to know that. And it's just a money-making venture for these stupid universities. That's all it is. Um, that they're just churning out money and money and money, and it goes up every year, and it's absolutely ridiculous for the predominance of careers that you could possibly go into. So make trades awesome. The high school that my oldest graduated with and, and my youngest will go to, they have a program whereby when you graduate from high school, if you take certain classes, you'll be certified in welding, and you can start making welding money right out of the gate, okay? You give an 18-year-old a portable welder and tell them to go out in the field and, and stick weld, you know, farming equipment and things that break down on job sites and whatnot. Uh, he will make more money than you will spend <laughs> in the first four years of your other kids college. Um, it's insane what some of the, and you know, I, it, it's, I came from a family. I tried in middle school to, to go to woodworking and, um, uh, shop and all that kind of, I wanted to take those classes because they interested me. I, I wanted to learn stuff that, um, you know, I didn't know. And that, that kind of stuff was intriguing to me. And my dad wouldn't let me go. Um, and I, I think it was a stigma on it back then that, oh, you just end up being a, you know, those classes are for people that are just going to be your poor blue collar, you know, there's going to be framing houses their whole life. And, and that's not the way I looked at it. And I appreciate, you know, what he was thinking, you know, but I do think th times have changed. If my, my son came to me and was like, hey, I want to go to shop class. I'm like, awesome. You know, that's great because those are skills that you will take with you forever. Stop paying people to do stuff you can learn yourself. That's awesome. And do electrical work because I'm scared of electrical work and I can have you come by and do stuff. But um, so, yeah, it, it's great. OK, um, quit the bus and fix the schools. Quit sending people all over the city, you know, because they're underprivileged in the school district they're in. Make the school district better. Make them be better, okay? That's as simple as that. Make the schools better, and it doesn't matter where they get they get sent to school because they're all going to be equal. Um, and, and again, move the teachers into those schools, you know, if, if that's what it takes. Common Core, all right? Whatever, whoever invented this stuff, I want them all drawn and quartered because they're idiots. Uh, I had literally a math problem in front of me a few years ago, and I looked at it for 20 minutes. I couldn't figure out how I was supposed to figure it out. I know how I can figure it out through math, but this common core crap, it was insane. It, it is the most insipid thing I've ever seen in my life. It, it really is dumb. And then they got stuff where, like, my oldest son can't write in cursive because they stopped teaching that when he was in school. They're eight years apart. My youngest can write in cursive. So... I got a 20 year old that can write, you know, it can't write in cursive and I got a 12 year old that can. It, it's crazy. Um, but that's the kind of stupid crap. Like how are we supposed to sign a check? Because there's certain things where you have to sign your name. It's kind of dumb. But um, I, the, the, I got two more things and I'll finish. And, and the, the one of the last one is again, abolish the Department of Education. Um, 4,000 employees, 60, $70 billion budget. It's absolutely ridiculous. The trillion and a half, um, money that they've wasted since their inception. Um, there's so many bad things about it. It just brings in the bureaucracy, which never does anything good. You can get rid of all the Pell Grants and all that, you know, crap that the student loans and all that and privatize it and it'll be better done. Um, you can transfer that stuff to a different department, but get rid of the Department of Education. Take all that money and invest in your schools. Invest in your kids, invest in your schools, invest in the future. Invest in something that no matter where you live, no matter what you bring home at the end of the day on your paycheck, no matter what other factor comes into play, you will be glad that your kids showed up at school that day because they're all assembled the same way, okay? Um, states' rights, let them come through um, for you for a change, you know? Um, there are certain criteria that will almost 90-some percent or more will show that it, this is a clear criteria for something that will set you up for failure. Um, you know, prison, death, whatever. Um, having a baby out of, uh, uh, getting pregnant before you're like 16, 17, 18, whatever it is. Having a baby out of wedlock uh, early on in life, not graduating high school, dropping out. All these things are just predictors of horrible behavior in life because you're not going to have anything to fall back on. We should make schools something that um, people like going to they feel loved, they feel welcome, and they're glad to be there. There'll be days where they won't, but for the most part, 
that's how they'll feel about it. And the last thing I'll say that would improve schools is they need to bring back teacher smoking lounges. Because I just thought those were so cool, man. You'd see that door pop open and they just just plume of Marlboro smoke just rolling out. And uh, I don't know, there's just something cool about that. Um, and I'm sure the teachers would appreciate it too. So anyway, that's my take on why the government school system sucks. And I'm tired of talking.